With the Nintendo 64 lurking over Sega's shoulder, their platform, the Sega Saturn, was in a do-or-die situation. Sega was trying to do everything in its power to take some of the weight off Sonic's back. Mario was killing Sonic, and with all the other IPs Nintendo had at its disposal, Sega needed some serious ammunition if they wanted to even dream about surviving another console war. Creativity has never been brought into question as far as Sega is concerned, and Nights Into Dreams is just a prime example of how far Sega's creativity can take them. Nights Into Dreams is an on-the-rails flyer slash collect-a-thon that requires you to rely on precise controls in order to complete various levels. It took me a while to figure out what I was doing because I had to physically read the manual to figure everything out. I don't want to sound like a spoiled millennial who expects everything in a game to be spoon-fed to me, but this was just plain lazy on Sega's part. There are plenty of older games that have tutorials within their first levels that teach you exactly what you need to do without you having to read anything. Game design alone can act as a tutorial, and Nights Into Dreams did a poor job displaying that. If you look up videos talking about the game design of the first levels of, like, Super Metroid or Super Mario Bros, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Those frustrations quickly wiped away once I got the hang of everything, and it was definitely worth the first 15 minutes of messing around. The controls, the high-speed action, and the music kept me hooked through this playthrough. Just so I can convey the goal of the gameplay, the Flying Purple Dude's goal is to get 20 blue orbs through an on-the-rails two-dimensional flying sequence. If you obtain all the orbs and return them to this chamber thingy before time runs out, then you move on to the next sequence. There are four different sequences per level, and then once you finish that, you go on to the boss. This sounds simple because... it is. But I actually had a blast playing it. All the levels were very different from a gameplay and aesthetic standpoint. What you're seeing here is remastered graphics on my Xbox port, but even in a more pixelated fashion, this game looks amazing for its time. On the remastered version, you can still switch back to the Sega Saturn graphics if you want to go on some nostalgic overdose or something. As far as visuals and music are concerned, Nights Into Dreams wins in my book. The boss battles look awesome, but unfortunately they're pretty crappy in my opinion. This dragon boss looks awesome. It's a giant, intimidating dragon. This has to be an epic battle, right? Nope. I actually figured out by accident that you literally have to just run into his face to hurt him, to only then rinse and repeat like 10 times. To me, that's just lazy game design. There's no progression throughout the battle, no difficulty curve, just a simple rinse and repeat and then you move on. Nights Into Dreams only takes about 2-3 hours to complete, but don't let that short playthrough stop you from thinking that there's no replayability. Beyond the blue orbs, there are tons of other things to collect, and that's going to have a direct effect on your overall score and grade, which adds a whole arcade element to this game as well. Sonic Team is obsessed with grades. Basically, the replayability lies within the time-based collect-a-thon. Think of Nights Into Dreams as a timed Banjo-Kazooie on-the-rails flying... dream... game. I actually still don't really know what this game is all about. This game was ported due to a very loyal fanbase that was unlucky enough to get it on the Sega Saturn. The Saturn was a disaster, but this was one of the few games that was fun for its time. Does it hold up today? Kind of. I definitely had a great time playing it, but it's not the kind of game that I can see myself going back to after even one playthrough despite the fact that I could improve my rankings. Let me know in the comments if there are any other forgotten games for the Sega Saturn. I'm definitely going to do a review on Super Sonic Racing at some point, although that game deserves to be forgotten. It's just too funny for me to not review. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay tuned every Sunday for more Swiss Cheese Reviews.